This bike has roots to 1923, this one to 1959, that one to 1969, but it's 2017. It's time for a retro Roadster Revisited shootout. A couple years ago, we uh, took out the first R9T and the first CB1100. Now we've got a CB1100EX and an R9T Pure, and of course, the new Triumph T120 Bonneville into the mix. John, what are we doing here? We're having a nice day at the beach, aren't we, Kevin? It's hot, hot day today, but it's nice here in the 70s. We're actually at the bottom of the igneous rock formation four millions of years ago when these bikes were formed. Huh? <laughs> that, that BMW is like, this is the first motorcycle, right? The Max Freeze 1923, built the first Boxer Twin. Uh, Triumph Bonneville is new and improved just a couple years ago, but the first Bonneville was 1959 or something. Mm -hmm. And the Speed Twin, it's based upon 1938. And uh, the Honda's just a baby. The first one of these was 1969, the CB750. Uh, it's kind of turned the world on, on edge, the first of the Japanese which took over from the British. It kind of killed off the British motorcycle industry, but now it's back. The German one never, never went away. Yep. There was a short period during a bad time in the <laughs> 40s where production slowed a little bit. But um, yeah, if you're into history and you're into motorcycles, these kind of combine some of the best elements of both of those things. So we're gonna go for a ride and find out which one we like best. I've been romping around these three bikes all day, plus earlier this week. Got a little bit of Battleship Gray here next to a Battleship, the USS Iowa. And we're at a little bit of a uh, stand down here of which is the best bike because each of them does something a little bit different than the other, a little bit different character, a little bit different standout, a little bit different disappointments. Evans, why don't you start us off and tell us about your favorite bike? Well, I'd have to say my favorite bike is the R9T Pure. The BMW, I just think, is the most versatile bike of the bunch here. Um, it's got the performance chops uh, that the others were trying to keep up with, and we did our roll on test, it left all of them in the dirt. Um, handling is much nicer, I think it's probably because it's the only 17-inch front wheel out here. Um, engine power is awesome. The only thing I would change on this bike is it needs some rear suspension work. It's a little bit harsh in the rear suspension. But um, other than that, I think this is just a perfect all-around motorcycle. It does everything you want it to do. And because it's naked and it's not uh, single purpose in the way what it's been refined to do, it just it really appeals to me on that level. And, and I just have to say one last thing. <laughs> I'm shocked, given it's my shocked. love of parallel twins, that the BMW beat out the Triumph, in my opinion. Well, I'd say there's a lot of things to like about that BMW. It is the sportiest bike. When we were out in the canyons, that's the bike to be on. If you want to keep up with your guys, your friends on Jixers and stuff on a standard bike, that would be your first choice. Some nice uh, aluminum bits on that. It looks high class. Uh, shaft drive, though, uh, that's a good thing. No oiling the chain, but also a bad thing because I think that's part of the reason why the, the rear suspension is a bit harsh. It's a heavier uh, swing arm and uh, arrangement back there. These other ones are chain driven. Uh, the BMW also is the only one here without a center stand, which helps contribute to its lightest in class weight. And that's that. another thing that really helps it uh, handle well on the canyons. It is light, it's like 50 pounds less than the Triumph and like 60 pounds less than the Honda, I believe. We learned on the scales this morning. I, what makes it give it such good acceleration though, they shorten the gearing when they, whatever bike they created it from, they shorten the gearing a little bit. So when you get going 80, it's a little buzzy, it's a little busy. It's kind of a little busy all the time for, for, for me. And I think if I'm buying this kind of bike, I'm not really looking for a real sport bike. I'm looking for kind of a cruising around town. And it has to be a little bit sporty. You have to be able to go around corners on it some. But I don't think it's that much better than the Honda or, or the Triumph for, for, for me, for, for sporty riding. These are both softer and bigger, but they kind of both get it done. It seems like somehow, I don't know how. The Honda with a new dual bending valve fork this year. Is that what it's called? Dual <laughs> yeah, bending dual valve? Bending, yeah. yeah, it's better. And uh, yeah, it's better than it was. And uh, the, the rear end suspension works pretty good too. 
I, I think the thing works. It's kind of like a big old couch, but it goes really good. And I, I have to, I have to like the Honda because I. I've complained about this gas tank seam forever, like the Triumph has. Like, why don't they get away get away from that? And they finally did, and it looks like a hundred times better to me. It kind of, when I look at it, it, reminds me of some old classic Norton or something. You know, it looks really nice to me now, and the paint is outstanding, and the chrome is like as good as on a Harley. Yep. And um, ever looking like this kind kind of a kind of a, a retro bike. And so that one's got steel fenders, not plastic ones. I could go on, but go ahead. Go but I would like business. to say, you know, it's a it's a retro bike, but I don't want you to. I, I don't think we need to go back to retro power delivery. And yeah, it's it, just it, not it's, it's not that fast. It's not super fast. But. Least power of the group, and it kind of shows it that way too. Uh, and being the heaviest bike as well. Yeah. But I, I agree. I, I think we all agree to best for me anyway. The best looking bike of the bunch. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely it's, beautiful. And the finish detailing is excellent. Yeah. Uh, they're all about 12 grand uh, in their base level, but it's the Honda that actually shows maybe the, could look to be yeah. the most expensive bike Yeah, visually. But yeah, the power, I bet you a CB1100 from 30 years ago has more power than that. That does only about 80 horsepower of the rear wheel. And uh, for a nearly 1,200cc motorcycle, that seems like a little bit of a missed opportunity. A four-cylinder, yeah, two yeah, against the know, twins. I, it's, for me, it's kind of with these things, it's more about the torque. And it makes almost as torque as, as the other ones do. Really low for a four-cylinder at only 25, 3,000 RPM, which is when, when you're, if you're not sport riding, which we should do less often, <laughs> more just cruising around town. This thing's awesome. Well, it's got plenty great of torque. around town, but it just doesn't feel as sprightly, even in the no, torque No, it doesn't feel as sprightly. As as the, the BMW, the I BMW have to, has just romp and bottom and torque, I, I have which, to I, say, which I love. Yeah, even though that's British, this one's more genteel. This is the ah. most genteel bike of the group, and it's a nice change of pace. It has a, but the exhaust has a really nice burble. It's got the Excellent. dual exhaust. Yep. It sounds really good, but it's not loud. And the, the Triumph has a great motor too, but I kind of like this one a little bit. And if it's enough power, John, why were you talking about shaving the head and putting... Uh, uh, I was just saying, when I looked at the specs, I see it's got, <laughs> got uh, ten, 10 to one compression, lower compression than the others. Yep. And it kind of looks like, um, it's kind of like a big play school kit for adults. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the bolts that hold the the hold the, the cylinder head on. I encourage you to take it off of there and maybe put some higher compression pistons or maybe shave it a little bit. Get a little more compression. You could you could have fun bumping it up a little bit. I don't think I would, but I bet it wouldn't be hard to make it competitive power wise with the other two I, if you I, felt I, like it. So what I one thing in defense of the Honda and its motor is that exhaust system sounds so sweet. The burble it has yeah. exiting corners up in the canyon to suffice that you don't not spinning it way up. It just it, it has this great tone that just puts a smile on my face. And I, I, I don't want to insult your BMW, but it's kind of the opposite the way that thing sounds to me. I think that the best Boxer Twin is the quietest Boxer Twin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that one sounds I like I won't this even exhaust say I don't really like it. I, I like really it too. Like Blatty, I'd say. Blatt. I guess you could call it, call it blatty. I'd call it more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Flatulent. Flatulent, that's it. <laughs> Flatulent. All right, well, since we're talking about sounds, how about the Triumph here, which is going to be my choice of the three. The 270 degree uh, crankshaft on this makes it sound like a heat twin, nice deep sound, not a lot of vibration, counterbalancer, and really good power from, from idle on up. It, it's, it, doesn't have a great power horsepower it's peak kinda, figure, yeah. but it's got power everywhere, and uh, I really enjoyed riding this around. This felt like a great yeah. uh, way to go retro. I didn't feel like I was on. I needed to be on a sport bike yeah. or something like yeah. the BMW yeah. is like. I want to go fast on that. This one's more casual. Yeah. But the thing I don't like about it is it's it's slow to steer. It feels really heavy steering, and it made me think of the Street Twin that we love so much, right? That had a single disc front brake instead of these dual discs, mm -hmm. and it just felt like such a more nimble machine than this and that's my mm. only real complaint about the Bonneville. Well but the bar other, is kind of narrow. The, yeah, yeah it's, it's less really leverage. Narrow. But again, a lot of nice finish detailing on this one as well. The aluminum here, the, the faux carburetor fuel injector things. Uh, I, I just felt like this was a great way to go retro without a lot of penalties. Yeah. Yeah, when it comes to function, I like that every bit as much as the Honda, I think. Cause it's got like the uh, street twin, it makes its most of its torque at like 3200 RPM. 
So it's like makes a huge, and then it kind of tapers off, but it gets you going immediately. It's got a great, great big twin. Um, would it be heresy for me to say I like the street twin engine more? Than yes, the that, would, that, would, that would actually be, be heresy. But yeah, that's just, the street twin's a great little bike too. But as far as function going around corners, I, I, I like both of these, the, the Triumph and the Honda. But since they're so even performance wise, I got to go for this one kind of well, close we, to the same price. We haven't mentioned the suspension on the Triumph, but out on the freeway, it is the nicest riding of all of them. I, I, you know, dealing with the expansion joints, it just gobbles them up. Yeah, that first inch or two of uh, travel on the shocks is really nice. The progressive springs the on right there. there too. Uh, no, the yeah. Honda's the yeah. Honda's good. The Honda's the BMW, good too, but that's the BMW a little is the only one that's uncomfortable on the freeway. Yeah. Oh. So, but the I, I thought the Triumph was was best if you were using it for a commuter bike and had to hit the interstate into town every morning that oh. um, the Triumph would be a really good choice yeah. for that. Yeah, the, the thing I like about the Triumph, does it have the least buzz at cruising speed too? It's Very the smoothest smooth. running yeah. when you're going 80. A little four-cylinder four buzz, but not, not at all bad for, for me. You, you, it would drive crazy, no? No, it's not, it's not so bad. Okay then, it, no, passes the, the the it passes the test. The frequency didn't bother me that much. The amplitude yeah. doesn't, you know, it's, yeah. it's zero all the time, but it's not, it's not really bad. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's great. I think it's cool. I like to be able to scoot back and forth on the flat seat, which you can do yeah. on the Triumph also. You can that, do it on all of these pretty not much. Not really pretty on that one though. Yeah, let's, let's the uh, mention the seats because uh, yes, the Honda and the Triumph are great seats, great flat seats. I've given my, my daughter rides on both these bikes and they really love the comfort nature of that. The BMW is, is got a great a, flat board. It's not uncomfortable, <laughs> but it's not as comfortable yeah. as these ones. And uh, I think that's part of the penalty for it looking so good, right? Uh, yeah. That's probably the best looking seat. Well, the, brown, about the looks. brown, that's pretty nice too. But uh, but yeah, not, not quite as comfortable, but definitely the sporty one. And then my Honda has a helmet lock. It's got bungee hooks all over the place and a real chrome rail to strap stuff to. You, has your bike got that? Has your bike got that? It's got a rail. Mm, my bike's got a rail. It doesn't have the, the, does it have a helmet lock? I didn't do that much research. See there? No, it doesn't. It, well, his helmet lock is hanging outside for all, everyone to see. You can't see the, the little windshield wiper inside the oil window over here, the, inside the sight glass? To, they put all the stuff from 1969 on here, and it's, only it's better. The, Top triple clamps, beautiful brushed aluminum. It is nice. It's a nice bike. It is. It's a good that's, that's, bike. that's all I've got to say. And you, the horn. <laughs> we'll have to fill out the official scorecard. Those first, things underneath the, the headlight, that's, those are horns, and they are loud. You will get noticed on that bike. And you get to do them every time you hit the turn signal. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, uh, Honda has switched up the horn and turn signal locations, and so first time when you switch over to the Honda, it's a good chance you're going to hit the horn. So let me bag on uh, Evans's bike one more time. Those nice uh, spoke wheels on there, that's uh, apparently a $2,500 option. It comes with uh, cast aluminum wheels, which is probably all you need, and probably lighter than this and make it steer even nicer. But if you want the spoke wheels, uh, you got to pay extra for them. They're standard equipment on the Honda and Triumph which jacks the price of the least worthy bike up to the most expensive bike here. All right, cornering clearance. That's another thing uh, we didn't really get into too much today, but uh, on our jaunts through the canyons, uh, it's the Honda that drags first, the Triumph not far behind, and the BMW, you gotta be ripping pretty good to even touch the pegs on that. So great cornering clearance, but at the cost of a little less uh, seat to peg room. You got the tightest leg room on the BMW as well. This is the, this is the most comfy, isn't it? It's pretty comfy. The, 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 and the Triumph are almost interchangeable. They're both great. Plenty, plenty of room. Plenty of room for a passenger on the back. Not that anybody will ride with me, but you know, <laughs> just in case. So if you want to go retro, there's three great ways to do it here, and they don't really compete totally head to head. So pick the one that looks best to you, or pick the one where it's the engine configuration that you like best, or pick the one where your brand is gr well served by the dealer close to you. Uh, these are all uh, 12 grand, and honestly, I think we could all, all be happy on any of them. They're, they're cool in ways that new bikes driven for performance aren't. These are bikes that you can do almost anything on, look cool, and give your significant other or your kid a ride on the back and not feel like you're uh, going to have them fall off when you're ripping around at 90 miles an hour. 
All right, so if you like this video, make sure to press that like button on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, you gotta go over to motorcycle.com where the full test will be there with weights and dyno figures and a lot more clever words from these guys. That's it, I think. We'll fill out the scorecard and see who wins this thing. Since we're split, kinda, huh? Yeah, it's gonna come down to the scorecard again. Where you have to go to motorcycle.com to see it. There's nothing more obnoxious than a loud motorcycle right, when you're trying right. to hang out with your battleship. You don't want to <laughs> criticize them, they're out saving lives. Exactly.